Okay. So let's pray and uh, let's uh, get into this morning's session. Let's pray together. Abba Father, we thank you for your powerful word in our lives, O oh God. Lord, we know that uh, your words are life. And so, Father, as we study your word this morning, we pray that, Lord, you will impart, O oh God, the power of the word in each one of our hearts. Uh, and God, we, we uh, thank you that uh, we will surely see, Lord, all the victories that you have in store for us in our lives. We praise you. We worship you. We speak a blessing, Lord, over all the students, uh, the faculty, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've been studying about faith. And in this chapter, chapter 4, we are specifically looking at the teachings of Jesus on the subject of faith. And we discussed how there is the truth of God's word, and then there is the reality of the natural world, what we call as facts. Secondly, we saw three insights from the teachings of Jesus. First one is that all things are possible through faith. Because God is God and uh, he is able to do things that we cannot even imagine. So that was one thing we learned. Second is that we receive according to our faith. So as much as our faith, that much we will receive from the Lord. And the third one is that our will and desire is involved in the exercise of our faith. So we mostly spoke about uh, desire in the last class and we said that desire is connected to our faith and uh, we need to earnestly desire for certain outcomes and let's also remember when we say desire it does not mean a fleshly or a worldly desire because scriptures also tell us delight yourself in the lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. So when we delight ourselves in the Lord, what happens is that the desires of the spirit, right? the desires of God are put into our hearts. And those are the desires that we bring before the Lord. And we say, God, you know, I desire this, which is a godly thing. And God gives us those desires. Those desires should be connected to our faith. So when we say desires, it doesn't, blindly mean yeah anything anything random anything ungodly uh, desire which is a desire that is ungodly is valid in the sight of god so we are very clear right on all these all these subjects so let's move ahead now and uh, uh, talk about the other aspects we've briefly touched on faith being the key to see god's glory manifested as well uh, when Jesus spoke to Martha and said, you only believe, you will see the glory of God. So what do we need today to see God's glory in our lives? Faith. So in any situation where we want to see God at work, what is the glory of God? God showing up. God showing, him, showing up with his power and what he can do. So if we want God to step into a situation, it cannot happen without faith. If faith is there, God will step into that situation. But if faith is not there, the situation will remain as it is. So the point is, if we want the glory of God to manifest, we need faith. So have faith in every situation. Even in a, a tough situation, a broken down situation, hopeless situation, when we have faith, it's like inviting God and saying, God, come, step into this problem or this circumstance, this issue. And we will see what God can do. But for that, one needs faith. Okay. So we invite God into a situation uh, through faith. Now, the fifth point here. When things go from bad to worse, Jesus encourages us to believe because if we believe if we have faith he can step into the situation if we don't have faith then 
God also will not do anything, right? So that is the reason because God wants to work. He says, you have faith, you believe, then I can step into the situation. Even when things go from bad to worse. Okay. Are there any such circumstances? Yes or no? Do we experience? We do. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, a financial situation where we were expecting something to come and it didn't. And the days are passing. We are coming closer to the, the deadlines. It's getting worse. It's getting tougher. It's getting serious. Okay. It's getting, uh, you could even say, dangerous. What do we do? No. As long as God has promised regarding that situation, he will always come through. But what does he expect from us? To hold on to faith, even when it is getting worse. Okay, so maybe it's a financial. What about health? Sometimes it happens. We trust God and uh, we are believing God, but maybe our health got worse. Earlier, we were not able to do a couple of things. Now, we're not able to do many more things. So what's happening? It's becoming more difficult. In most situations, what should we do? Should we just give up? Yeah, it's not resolving. Uh, and, and so maybe the right thing to do is to stop believing. However, the way Jesus responded to people in their difficult situations, as they were getting worse, was only believe okay only believe and as you believe god can do a miracle if we stop believing then what happens we get god out of the picture when we stop believing but when we continue to believe god can still do something when the situation is getting worse okay so there are two such examples in our notes the first one is Jairus, Mark chapter 5. So what happened to Jairus? You tell me. It's already there in the notes. So you can read it up and one of us can summarize. I hope you, you have your mics with you so that you can quickly share. What happened to Jairus? What about his situation? While he was uh, still speaking, some came from the ruler of the sinners' house who said, Your daughter is dead. Uh, why trouble the teacher any further? Uh -huh. uh, um, 36. As soon as Jesus he had the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the sinners, uh, Do not be afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. So, can you summarize it? Like, what, what is going on in this situation? The situation was turning from bad to worse because the daughter was already dead and uh, looks like there was no hope. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mavai. So you're saying that the situation grew worse, isn't it? Yes. So, Jer yeah, Jairus's daughter was sick when he came out of the house and he was hoping that he will find healing. But the problem has changed right now. The solution from God that he, he was seeking was healing. But now somebody comes up to him and they're saying, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? That sounds heartbreaking. He was seeking healing, but now what to do? Daughter is dead. There's no question. How can healing help? A dead girl. So it's worse. Now, in this situation, remember we said the first thing is with God, all things are possible. He is the giver of life, He is the one who has created us. So, I don't know if Jairus realized that he was approaching the Creator Himself. But Jesus is instilling faith in his heart because Jesus knew what he could do. 
He is the king of glory. There is nothing difficult for him. Whether it is healing or whether it is resurrection. So, because there is this possibility of resurrection, Jesus tells Jairus, do not be afraid. Only believe. So Jesus was saying, Jairus, you will get a miracle from me provided you believe. Even when the situation has become challenging. Now healing will not help. Only resurrection is needed. How to get a resurrection? God knows what he can do. So God is saying, I am telling you, do not be afraid. Only believe. And God will do a miracle. So that is the hard part, isn't it? We want to go by all the situations around us and say, how? How God? What is the logic behind this? But do not be afraid. Only believe. I remember one of uh, the young people in uh, the church where we minister, uh, she got an opportunity to study abroad. So from the beginning, things were tough as she was going. You know, there was difficulty to get the visa. There was difficulty uh, for everything. So finally, she went. Thank God, everything cleared up. And once she reached there, after a couple of days, she texted me. And she said, I'm looking for a part-time job. And the university offers part-time jobs. But for some strange reason, she said, uh, it's like I don't qualify for the part-time job. I'm trying to open the portal. And I am trying to put my details. It's not working. Pastor, it's not working. I'm tired. I'm trying. It's not working. In that moment, no, it's almost impossible. Uh, she said, maybe I don't qualify for it. So I don't think the portal will take my details. So I don't even know why I'm trying, but I'm trying because I need an income. So in that moment, I, I remember very clearly, uh, I saw the message and I, I felt so helpless. Like, what can you say? Tell me, right? What can you say? Uh, I'm on the other, uh, I'm in another continent. I can't be there. Even if I was there, how is it helpful? It's not helpful. It's like an impossible situation. I just prayed. I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to say. She's stuck. And it was as if, you know, the Holy Spirit was, uh, and I prayed in the Spirit for some time. I was like, okay, I need to hear from God. These are the moments when we need to hear from God. The situation is very difficult. I just told her, you know what? I'm praying for you right here. You believe, you try one last time. One last time. Just enter your details one last time. I also don't know why I said it. I said, you believe? Enter your details one last time. It was amazing. She, she did it. And immediately she, she texted me back saying it's opening. <laughs> you know? It had not opened. She had been trying and trying and trying. In that moment, just opened. She filled her details. She got a part-time job also. She's finished her course also. She graduated. She got a real job also. Everything is over. It's done. But in those moments, it was impossible. Like We are wondering, if you're not eligible, why will the portal allow you to input your details? But we prayed. I said, you know what? It's impossible. It looks impossible. You believe. You type your details one more time. And she did it one more time. It opened. She registered. Things went forward. Okay. So I'm just trying to explain to us. See, it's good to know that Jairus got a miracle. But what about you and me? What about our everyday lives? The just shall live by faith. Remember, you and I are those people justified by the blood of Jesus. When you and I encounter an impossible situation, pray. Believe God. It's a good opportunity to believe God. And when the situation is getting worse, we say, God, all things are possible by you. What would Jesus tell us in such a situation? Do not be afraid. Only believe. So believe. 
and take the step forward if god has called you to do that don't give up only believe notice those words only believe i wish one of you artistic people could put that down you know or in a, in paint or something only believe only believe that's what jesus is calling us to do only believe the terrible situation can turn around so jairus' daughter was unwell very sick now dead jesus was able to raise her only believe even when it feels like i'm losing faith have faith in god only believe okay we have a second situation second situation that of dead lazarus this is in john chapter 11 so what's happening here someone could you summarize please very dead situation okay yes lazarus has been dead for some time and they sent yes. for jesus yes hoping that uh, he would be healed but uh, he yes. died by the time uh -huh. jesus comes it's already four days mm. and uh, the body is already decaying it looked quite hopeless yes. to, to the sisters okay. yeah so what did jesus say verse 40 john 11 we've seen the same scripture in the previous section what did jesus say jesus said to her did i not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of god amen amen thank you uh, juliana so Again, John 11, verse 40, where Jesus is saying, Did I not say to you, if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. So for us to see the glory of God, when things go from bad to worse, we must believe God. We must believe God. I remember there's another, uh, I just want to share with us a few examples so that we understand this not just, you know, back in the time of Jesus, but even today, these things are applicable. So there was a family that was coming to church and uh, uh, they they are not from Bangalore. They are from some Northeast, uh, you know, Northeastern state. Um, so there was a family that was coming and their relatives were visiting and they had a little boy with a certain syndrome. And in that syndrome, he would keep getting fever. He would, uh, uh, they, they did everything they could, but constantly he had fever. So they told us, they said, Pastor, he's not uh, recovering at all. It's just getting really bad. We brought him here to Bangalore to show him to some of the doctors. If you could please come and pray. That will be really very good. So I don't know these relatives of that family, but we thought, okay, why not? We'll go. So we fasted and, you know, we everything, and we just went. And we may have visited their home for maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Simple prayer, just faith in our hearts. Okay, they are saying it's getting worse. This child will not live very long. So many things. But we said, Lord, nothing is difficult for you. You are a healer. We are going to pray for this child prayed over him and then in the next couple of days that girl called me back she said for the first time the fever has stopped amen they brought the child here thinking this is like the end uh, no option you know no uh, hospital is working out in their region let's try some hospitals in bangalore but praise god you know, there was a miracle that child was well recovered they didn't admit him or anything they just stayed here had a vacation and went back to their place okay uh i mean it's it's like when we trust the word of god miracles happen we see god's glory in an impossible situation there are many such impossible situations i'm just sharing a few from my life i'm sure if i ask you 
you have prayed and you have seen the glory of God. But what was the common factor in those moments? Only believe. If you believe, faith. Right? We also said faith is that key. We employ faith. It's like God saying, okay, I can step into the situation because you now have faith. Okay, so only believe. As long as God has promised something, regardless of the circumstances, we will see a miracle. Don't go by the circumstances. Don't go by the natural. Go by the spiritual. There is another realm. The spiritual realm, which operates by certain laws. What are some of those laws? One, of course, is faith. Do we want to get something from the spiritual realm? We will not get it, you know, by doing our own thing. We have to operate by the laws that God gives us. Faith is a law. Faith is a law. So if you operate by that law, we are going to receive. We are going to pull from the spiritual realm into the natural realm all the blessings, the miracles, the power of God into our circumstances, right? So whenever we encounter a tough situation, pray, OK? And I'm just uh, encouraging all of us, apply it. When somebody calls, you know, so many things happen at home and Bible college, suddenly they'll say, ma'am, water is not there. Pray, first thing, and say, God, I'm believing. Whatever has happened, you know, your, you will give us the wisdom. You will intervene. This situation will be resolved. It's a simple thing. It's a very simple thing. But it's a good opportunity to apply our faith. Right? Ma'am, transport has not come. OK, let's believe. We lose all the practical stuff, but believe, ma'am, computer is not working. OK, believe. Right? Every situation is a situation where you and I can practice our faith. Practice your faith. I'm not able to understand. OK, no problem. Pray. Start again. Study again. Learn again. Apply the faith. So that is how our faith is going to increase. And the situation is getting worse. Faith has to become stronger. Only believe. Did I not say to you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Now, let's look at how to apply how to apply our faith. So there are a couple of things uh, which uh, Jesus taught us about. One is about releasing our faith through the words that we speak. So how do we release faith? By what we speak. So. What I believe is connected with what I say. So I can't, I can't say that I believe. It's in my heart. I believe it's in my heart. Like, don't ask me to speak it. It doesn't work like that. We know that. How, how did God create? We've seen scriptures on that. He spoke. He made the heavens by speaking his words. He created you know many other things by speaking he said let there be light there was light so there is something again this is like a law you may ask why why should i speak follow the laws the spiritual law and god is teaching us jesus is teaching us if you have faith in your heart you will speak you will speak to the mountain and the mountain will be uprooted and cast into the sea so Speaking is a very essential part of releasing our faith, or you could say appropriating our faith. Okay? So again, there are scriptures here in our notes, all of which talk about speaking. So Matthew 17 verse 20, where Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So if you have faith as a mustard seed, faith is of the heart. We already said that. 
So faith is of the heart. Faith is in the heart. How to release? Faith is there. It's there in the heart. How to release? Already we've said the answer. Words. We, we've got to say it. We've got to declare it. We've got to speak it out. So speak your faith. Speak based on the word of God. What do we believe? What do we believe? You know, if, if I believe, yeah, God has good plans for my life, my declaration will be, God has good plans for my life. Plans to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a hope and a future. I'm saying it with my mouth. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield. I'm saying it. Right? I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, the Lord is my help. I'm saying it. My faith is in the word, the promises of God. How am I receiving it? Faith is in the heart, but words are in my mouth. Amen? So, we can learn to release our faith through the words of our mouth. If we are going to be silent, we are sort of, um, you know, hindering God's process. He's already told us. Jesus already said, if faith is sitting in your heart, faith as a mustard seed, open your mouth and speak it. Speak that faith. Speak that faith. Anything regarding the future, as I just said, regarding favor, regarding blessing, the work of my hands is blessed. We all work, right? But do we believe that God is going to bless our work? If I believe it, I will say, yes, Lord, I'm going to work today. You bless the work of my hands. You give me increase. I'm opening my mouth and I'm speaking my faith because that's the way to release our faith. If you have faith in your heart as a mustard seed, you will say, say, say it even to the mountain. It will be uprooted and cast into the sea. So speaking our faith is very, very important. That's the way to release our faith. There are a few more scriptures here. Uh, Mark 11, 22 to 23, same thing. Same thing that Jesus said. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So, we can accomplish God's purposes by releasing our faith through the words that we speak. There is another here. Could one of you read it out, please? Luke 17, verses 5 and 6. Luke 17, verses 5, 6. And the, and the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Mm, amen. So uh, people are asking, apostles are asking Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. But here is what Jesus is telling them. Okay, increasing faith and all is there. But what are we doing with the faith that we have? If you have faith, in this case, you know, uh, he says mustard seed again. Meaning, what is mustard seed faith? Very small. Yeah, that's the understanding. That's the interpretation. Very little. Even if we have little bit of faith, you speak and you will see the result. So what can we speak to? Yes. Like when children pray, uh -huh. small children pray, yeah. their faith is like a mustard seed. Why I'm saying that? Because they pray just like that. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want this. Lord, heal this. Do this. But that mustard seed faith is so big for them. Yeah. So it's like, but when we pray, so we pray with our minds. Mm. We don't pray by faith sometimes. 
we pray by our minds ki okay lord i am praying into you i am praying in your presence yes lord do this do that but like what what is specific in children's they just pray mm. they just pray with the authority yeah and so that like i notice that in my childhood when i prayed i received many things rather than when i am in my uh, young like this age yeah yeah so this is like mustard seed faith i like explains it that like kids explain it better that what is mustard seed faith mm-hmm. this is what i believe yeah sure sure i i mean i get uh, where you're coming from that uh, because you see for children maybe they don't have some of the life experiences to um, dull down their faith for many of us we've been through life we've we've experienced faith and disappointment so sometimes it's harder to believe that the these miracles will happen however even when we are adults we can have mustard seed faith uh we have to work on it basically so it's possible ha huh. hmm simple faith true yeah simple faith and uh yeah we can also come to that place of simple faith if we work on ourselves we generally call renewed mind romans 12 when our mind is renewed we can be like those children every day because our mind is saying yes to god's word okay so that's how we can get there right yeah child like faith and childish faith a uh, child like faith wherein we are very trusting of god childish is when we are not very mature okay great so yeah so even a little bit of faith can make um can bring forth a miracle so in the case of jesus who did he speak to who did he speak to there are examples he spoke to fig tree you remember where does this mark chapter 11 example come from it comes from that fig tree experience where jesus looks at a fig tree and the tree did not bear fruit at the time when he was hungry so what did jesus do he cursed it he cursed it you will shrivel up you will die and the next day when jesus was going with his disciples what happened it actually dried up and the disciples were amazed they said lord you said it has happened that's when jesus gives the remaining of what we saw he said if you have faith in your heart as a mustard seed you will say to the mountain because he was teaching them something what is that teaching teaching is did you notice i spoke yesterday and what happened today result how did jesus speak spoke with faith in his heart roughly 24 hours results in front of everyone it happened so what was jesus telling them in the following verses i believed i spoke to the fig tree if you believe and you speak to your mountain same thing will happen so he was teaching from his own experience he spoke to the fig tree it listen right everyone agrees yeah he spoke to the fig tree what else did he speak to you remember he spoke to the storm there was a storm and he looked at the storm and he said peace be still so you and i can speak to our storms whether they are you know circumstances or if it's a natural storm a natural calamity if i command natural elements will they listen they will if i'm doing it by faith it can happen it can happen right so it is possible if i speak through to a tree or if i speak to the plants or other material things it will listen see it it looks very amazing for us but if we carry the kind of faith that jesus carried and he spoke he spoke to a tree he spoke to the storm they all listened it can happen even in our experience so jesus was saying i'm using a principle this is the principle of faith released through words if you use it the way i am using it it will work for you 
Otherwise, he would have never given his disciples this teaching. He wanted them to operate this law, this principle. That's why he told them, this is how it works. If you can speak your faith, you wait and watch all the things that are going to take place in your life. So faith is released through the words that we speak. In the case of miracles, in the case of healing, you go, your servant will be healed. Be healed. Stretch out your hands. What is Jesus doing? Faith for healing. He is commanding. It's happening. Resurrection. Lazarus, come forth. Speaking. Release. Miracle. Wow. Dead man has come to life. Demons. Leave. I command you to go. Speak. Release. Faith is being released. If we don't open our mouths and release our faith, we're missing out on a part of what Jesus taught us. We can keep saying all day, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. Faith is in my heart. But if you have faith as a mustard seed in your heart, you will say. So this is something we have to learn in our everyday lives. When we are praying, uh, there is a book, APC publication, it's called as Speak Your Faith. Speak your faith. You can open that up. There are many scriptures given there which you and I can take during your prayer time. You want to declare it over your life. Speak. Speak it out for your healing, for your blessing, for your future, for your ministry, for your relationships, for your family. Declare your faith. And also when it comes to situations and circumstances. Nothing. It will not happen. This will happen. Speak your faith. And we will experience the power of our believing words. So faith is exercised through the words that we speak. Second, faith is exercised in prayer. By believing, you have received when you pray. And we've spoken about this in the subject of um, a prayer. We said when we pray, we must pray believing. So if we don't believe and we pray, we cannot expect to receive from God. There are two scriptures, and uh, I want us to go ahead and read it. So any two different people, quickly, it's there in the notes already. Just read it out aloud. Matthew 21, 22, Mark 11, 24. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Hmm. So in prayer, we will receive when we ask. What is the word? What is the word given? Believing. Believing. I'm praying. I need to receive from the Lord. But I must be believing. So if I pray a prayer, remove the believing. Remove the believing. What about the receiving? Not happening. I am praying. I am praying a lot. But not receiving. Why? Something is missing. What is that? It's there in the notes. Believing. Okay? So prayers where we don't believe prayers without faith doesn't doesn't help doesn't help because we are not believing god then we won't receive it so let's say you know if i just prayed i said okay i will be blessed in my in my studies or blessed in my job but actually i don't believe it i'm not seeing any blessings it's not, again, God's, you know, God not doing something for us. But we are missing the believing part. When we cannot believe, when we do not believe, 
forget about receive when we pray what does it say when you ask in prayer you will receive as long as you are believing so every prayer you and i pray this again we can practice i must pray with faith i must pray with faith because it's only the prayers of faith which are going to give results got it how to come to this place of believing how to come to this place of believing we just did it on monday hmm yeah prayer is there but how do we believe something when we when yeah correct so but that is later what does the scripture say it says when i'm praying itself i have to believe outcome has not yet come so how can i believe when the result is not yet there by reading the scriptures ha huh, you get faith okay so do you all remember we said that first we have to be sure that it is god's will it's god's word remember and so as we spend time in god's word as we spend time engaging in god's presence and maybe even earlier you're praying you come to a place where you are sure of what god has spoken then it is easy to believe then we can do this i'm not yet received but i am in a place where in the spiritual remember we said that we already receive it what is faith faith is the substance so by faith i have received already so once i prayed it you know how jesus prayed before he raised lazarus from the dead anyone do you know uh, what jesus said thank you yes yes correct so he says father i thank you because you always hear me so did jesus believe that lazarus is going to be raised from the dead yeah he already knew he had evidence in his spirit that is faith so when i'm praying a prayer in that moment do i carry faith and belief in my heart saying yeah i'm asking it'll be done that's the kind of prayer that brings results not a prayer which says i'm not sure i don't know maybe maybe not. that is not a believing prayer believing prayer says god will do it god has done it so we have to come to that place of praying like that see G jesus is giving us keys this is one of the keys when we pray pray prayers of faith whatever things you ask in prayer believing you will receive if no believing forget it we will not be able to receive okay one more scripture is there yeah i'll i'll come to your question uh, when i can we read the second passage please mark 11:24 Therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them mm. and you will have them Amen amen so same thing what we've seen earlier whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them when you believe that you receive them once you get it when to believe that you receive them before you receive them when you pray you believe that you receive them then you will have them they will come later but the believing comes at the time of prayer okay so yes vinay you you want to say something pastor like uh, before we came to faith is exercised in prayer mm -hmm. 
uh, we did faith is released through words yes uh, so when do we pray and when do we speak mm -hmm. so what what are the situations like uh, okay god heal me mm -hmm. or like do i speak to my sickness get out of my body or mm -hmm. like what are the like when do i pray yeah and when do i speak speak yeah so we pray to god we pray to god so you do all your asking that would be prayer speaking is when you're you're speaking to something like you know a fig tree a natural element or a, a natural situation like a storm or a spiritual situation or some you know deadness so when you're encountering things like that then you speak you we're not saying um okay let's take for example storm praying would sound like heavenly father take away the storm but that's not how jesus taught us he said don't even ask me anything you take your faith you speak to the storm so speaking looks like be still in jesus name prayer looks like abba father do something about the storm so we have to come to a place in believing where we identify these circumstances we say i don't even have to pray anymore i am talking to you i am talking to you situation i am talking to you deadness you know i am talking to you uh, barrenness famine in the name of jesus you turn around so that is speaking okay so when it comes to our everyday prayer life what we could do is pray you know bring all your requests to god we've seen all the different kinds of prayers and in the prayer time keep one slot for speaking the word like how we were saying earlier you know uh, i know god has good plans for my life take 15 minutes speak 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 so that's part of your prayer actually declaration so that's also something which can be done right okay all right so um we will need to stop here as we've run out of time and we will continue the remaining sections in the next class i would like to request one of our online students to please lead in prayer kindly unmute and pray aloud i can pass past i can pray yes yes pooja go ahead thank you our father we worship you we thank you god master thank you for today's teaching our god master lord i pray lord specially for your wisdom and knowledge and understanding thank you lord for pastor god master thank you jesus whatever she tell us your word master whatever she teach us master god Lord, help us to learn your word, to meditate your word, Master. Give us time, O oh Master God. Lord, help us, Holy Spirit, to understand your word, O oh God, Master. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are our best teacher, God, Master. And thank you for this teacher, this pastor, God, Master. You are given to us in our life, Lord, Master. I thank you. I praise you, Master God. Lord, help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit, to learn your word, to meditate your word, God Master, to understand your word, God Master. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful pastor, God Master. Thank you for a PC Bible College, a Master, you are given to us, a Master. Thank you, Lord. We all are heart, Lord Master Jesus. I thank you and I praise and I worship you. Lord, I pray for all the students also and all the pastors, Lord Master. I give it to your hand, oh God Master. Lord bless each and every person. Bless his, uh, bless pastors also, Master. Let Lord, I give you the glory and honor and praise, of Master. In Jesus' name, I pray, Master. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Pooja. Shubham, you have a question. I will answer it in the next class. Okay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.